Hello, my love. It's Allie. I'm so glad to be here with you today. So I want to talk to you today about what I do when I get in a funk or a lull or I'm just kind of like in one of those places where you get like lower energy, like unexcited, unmotivated, tired, like just kind of blah. First of all, I think that a lot of us expect ourselves to never get there or when you do get there, like you're supposed to come out of it really quickly. And that's what we want, right? Like we're so uncomfortable feeling that we want, we don't want to feel anything negative. And so when we get into like a little bit of a rut or a funk, we are like, how can I change this? How can I go back to super positive? And we really kind of have this unconscious expectation to be in a super high vibe, positive state all the time, which is crazy and not being a human. And so I want to talk about what I do when I get like that. I want this to give you a fresh perspective um, on what to do when you do get to that place. Or maybe you're in that place now and I really want this to serve you and support you right where you're at. The first thing that I want to say is what if it was just okay? What if it were okay that you're a human person, that you're not high energy, super positive, really feeling everything about your life like all the time? What if it were just okay? What if you let it be okay? So for me, like I let it be okay. I give myself space for my own humanity. I realize that that resistance in me for this funk that I'm in is me wanting to be perfect or needing to find a reason. Why am I feeling like this? What led to this? And honestly, if you're watching this, it's likely that you're a mom and, 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 a, and a person and you get tired sometimes. Like we need to give more space and more breathing room to our humanity. What if you just let it be okay that sometimes you're really high energy, sometimes you're really positive, sometimes you're really feeling life, and sometimes you're just not so much. Like what if that were okay? Because it is okay. It's it's the way that life life is, right? It gets to be okay for you. So you're a human, you know, and sometimes you need a break. But I realize in my own life and in your life too, you know, things still need to get done, right? There's still, things still go. The kids are still going. The house needs to still go. Food still needs to be made. Laundry still needs to get washed and folded and put away. And, and the house has to keep running. And, and if you work, like that has to keep going. Like things still go. So you're like, well, yes, I can learn to let it be okay that I'm not always in a high, positive vibe state of mind state of being but things have to keep going and I'm tired um, and I and you might say I can't rest let it be okay let ourselves be human but then like the world and life and things are keeping going and you can't just stop sometimes like sometimes you just can't stop so then like what do you do about that I think when we get into a funk like this or we just are not feeling it as much, um, the, there's two tendencies that I see. And one is to just plow through, keep going, hope it goes away, pretend it's not happening, um, tell yourself to suck it up, get over it, basically just push through. But the other tendency is to just, okay, I need to rest and so I'm going to rest and so I'm gonna just like let it all go. I'm just gonna do nothing for a few days. I'm gonna totally let it go. Um, you know, I'm gonna let the let the house go. I'm gonna catch up on work later. Um, you know, the kids and I can just kind of hang out. I'm just gonna let it all go. We already covered the problem with like pushing through. Like you're not giving yourself space to be a person. You're expecting yourself to just get over it and you're really not like tuning in and listening to what your body, what your spirit is trying to tell you and you're like forcing yourself to just keep going and you're not giving space for your humanity. On the other side, when you like decide, okay, I need to rest, I'm just gonna let everything go. 
what happens then is things are stacking up, right? The house is stacking up, the laundry is stacking up, the dishes are stacking up, um, the junk, the piles of takeout are stacking up and like, it's time to like make some real food, but you know, there's just, it's, everything is kind of falling apart and, and work is stacking up and things are just stacking, but it's been a few days and the funk hasn't left yet. Like what happens if the lull isn't quite over and you've given yourself a break, you gave yourself a day or two or three or four or a week off because you had the flexibility to do that and it's still not gone. You're still tired and you're still not feeling it. Now, not only are we dealing with kind of this funk that we're in where we're just kind of like, eh, I'm not feeling super, super high energy right now. Um, you know, not only are you dealing with that, but now you're behind and everything is stacking up and there's that added stress. And I mean, it's there's pressure now. So you have to kind of catch up and do even more work. And what if you're still kind of in a funk? Like, we don't know how long it will last. There's, there's periods of my life where I'm super high energy, really energetic. Like I can, I'm super productive pretty much every day of the week. And there's other seasons where it's not about being depressed or anything like that, but I'm just not as high energy. I'm not as productive. I feel like I need to move a little slower during the days. And so if I were to just say like, oh, well, I need to rest and just drop it, then the stacking up of all the things is going to stress me out. And then it counters the rest. It's not restful to see things stacking that I'm gonna have to catch up on later. And basically just crossing my fingers and hoping that I get a sudden burst of energy and productivity out of nowhere because I have all this to catch up on. Like, I don't want that pressure. I don't wanna live with that pressure. And so I think that the answer is not to shove through and force yourself and push through or to let everything go, but rather to notice, like get aware of where you're at and what's going on and what you need. Get aware of your humanity and do what I call working from a place of rest. And I'm going to explain what that is because this is what I do. It's how I make space for me being a human person. I don't want to have a life that's set up in a way that requires me to always be a hundred percent. I want to leave space for me to be a human person. And so working from a place of rest is one huge, huge mental shift that I made last year that has helped me tremendously because I do have a lot going on. I have four kids. I'm about to have five because we're adopting. I am running a big, really full business. Um, I've got a husband and a marriage to upkeep. I have my health and wellness and friendships and relationships and there's a lot and there's so many hours in the day, right? It's high pressure for me to feel like I always have to be 100%. So this idea of working from a place of rest is how I make space for me to be a human person amongst everything that's going on. Okay, so when I'm in one of these places where I'm just feeling like I need a little bit more rest, I'm not feeling super productive, I'm not feeling really like hyper energized, I love to start the day out a little bit different than I normally would. So everyone is always talking about like morning routines, morning routines, morning routines, and everyone's always asking me what mine is. And I think that the most important thing that I've done for my mornings is to give myself space for what I do in the mornings to change through the seasons of my, my life and my year. In my really busy, productive seasons of life, my morning routine is, is different than when I'm just needing more ease and flow. If your energy is in a season of feeling really productive and high, then your morning routine can look a little different. Maybe you get your workout done right away in the morning. Maybe you make um, yourself a nice big glass of lemon water and, and hit the gym or go for a really long walk and have some quiet time and pray and journal and, and get all done before the kids even wake up. And maybe there's seasons where you're not in that high energy state and you need it to go a little bit slower and your morning routine can reflect that. It's okay to not have this official rigid morning routine that you have to get done every single morning no matter what. And your life and your schedule and your work and all those things will of course come into play and like you need to do what you need to do. But wherever you have wiggle room and flexibility, make sure that you are using it to support yourself and the ebbs and flows and the different phases that you're gonna be in because you won't always be in the same mood and the same energy all the time. And if you set your day up to where it kind of feels like there's pressure for that to be the case, then that's not gonna feel good. 
So when I'm in one of these places, needing more rest, needing to move a little slower, I like to start my day slower as well. I like to kick it off right away, no matter what's going on, no matter what's on my calendar, with just like an exhale, just before we begin the day. So for me, this looks like not setting my alarm super early. Um, if it's possible for me to, and I own my own business, so there's a lot more flexibility there. So I can not start my day until like my work day, until like 10 or 11. Um, if I can cancel things altogether, I will do that sometimes. I give myself permission to do that, but I give myself permission to start the day slower, whatever that looks like. Any amount of flexibility that I have, I will take it and use it. And so starting it out with just breathing, taking some slow, deep inhales and exhales, just connecting with my body, checking in with how I'm feeling, maybe doing like a guided meditation, just like five or 10 minutes, really getting centered and grounded and connected to myself. And for me, connected to God before I start my day is huge. Another thing I love to do is take my coffee up to my room. So I'm back up to where I, you know, just was asleep. And I just like drink my coffee and kind of just slowly like pace in my room while I just sort of like am thinking and, and maybe even speaking out loud sometimes some positive words. Um, so this could be affirmations if you have a list somewhere. Um, but sometimes I just free, it's a free for all for me. And I'm just kind of praying and speaking out like gratitude and positive statements over my day. And you know, I'm in charge of my energy. I have the flexibility to do what I need to do today. Today is gonna be a good day. I am allowed to get my things that need to get done, done today from a place of internal rest. Like I'm getting myself into that place of rest and starting my morning a little bit slower and with something like a morning ritual that's actually going to support me with where I'm at and where my energy is at, which in this case is a little bit slower, a little bit lower, not so high energy, not so high productivity. And even though I have a very full life and I'm a busy mom and a busy woman with a lot on my plate, I can choose to start the day with rest. I can choose an internal state of peace and calm and go about my day from that place. But having this morning time to set me up in that way is everything. I also love to, after I kind of have this, this time in the morning to end this like morning routine in these seasons of my life with just sitting on the floor with my kids. Um, sometimes I finish my cup of coffee or have my second cup, just sitting on the floor with the kids and just asking them about their day and listening to their little voices, listening to their hearts, letting them talk to me. Um, I feel like the mindset in mom culture so much of the time is that our kids are in the way um, and they are like the opposite of peace. And I find that it's really our perspective of them and our mindset that they are in our way that causes that to be the, the truth. And so when I just like take a breath, sit down on, on the carpet with my kids and just drink my coffee and ask them like, what are you gonna, what are you excited for today? What are you gonna do today? What do you, what do you wanna do today? and just listen to them and, and kind of tell them about my day and ask what they're going to be doing while I'm doing this or what they're looking forward to about whatever's going on in their day. If their kids go to school, ask them about that. If they're going to see a friend, ask them about that. If they're going to be doing school at home, ask them about that. Ask them about the movie they watched the other night or just anything and just listen to them. I find that my kids are super, super grounding and it is so peaceful to just breathe for a second and instead of rushing around getting myself ready for the day, just giving myself less time to do my makeup and spending a few extra minutes like sitting with them is it brings a lot of peace. It's very, very grounding and it's a really, really good start to the day. So after I start the day like this, then I move into deciding that this is my internal state for the day. No matter what's on the calendar that couldn't be moved, no matter what chores or whatever is like stacking up that needs to be taken care of that day in the house, like I am going to choose to stay in this place of rest. My internal state is a thousand percent up to me. Nobody can decide on my energy except for me. Nobody can decide how I respond to things, what my mood is, what my thoughts are, except for me. So I'm taking that ownership and I'm grateful for it. I want that to be the case. I want me to be the one that's in charge of all that because I don't wanna be a victim and having everyone else able to come in and control my thoughts, control my energy and control how I'm feeling during the day. So even if the day is busier than I would prefer because I'm just feeling a little tired and slow, I can choose to have an internal state of rest and peace and go about my day from there. 
and any time throughout the day that I kind of feel like I, I left that state and I'm getting frantic or the chaos is seeping in or my thoughts are going somewhere negative or I'm just complaining, I can come back to that internal state that I started my day in. I choose my energy. No one can change my energy except for me. No one can tell my mind where to go. No one can tell my energy where to go. I decide and that is my power for the day. And then moving forward from there, I do my day and I do my day from a place, that place of internal rest. It's all about mindset. Literally everything stems from where you're at in here. Everything, the, the calendar and, and the things that need to get done during the day, like it's all, it's all always like that, but it can be, you can be folding a load of laundry from a state of internal chaos and have one experience and you could be folding that very same load of laundry in the very same spot in your house from a completely different internal state, a state of peace and rest and calm while you're focusing on your breath or t letting your toddler tell you about their favorite show and just living in that moment, the same task in the same place, totally different experience. It's all about what's going on internally and we are fully in charge of that. And practically there are things like my friend recently gave me this idea and I have been loving it and I've been doing it like, oh my gosh, not every day, but almost lately because I've been in one of these seasons of just like needing things to go a little slower and just feel a little bit better to me. Um, it's called a bed picnic. So basically I just like go in the kitchen and make myself like a bunch of snacks, um, kind of like charcuterie style, like some sliced veggies and fruits and crackers, like cheese, whatever you want, and just make myself like lunch or like a snack and bring it up to my room, make like a spread on my bed of all my snacks. I can, and then from there, I can get things done. I could fold the laundry, I can play music and have my laptop and get some work done, like in bed with snacks. I sometimes will bring the kids in with me and we'll all have a bed picnic together and I'll be, you know, folding the laundry or talking to them or we, since we homeschool, I can do school with them from that place, which we have done several times and is amazing. Change your thinking, get outside of the box. How can you make things lighter, better? How can you do something different than you normally do it? Can you do the same task or get the same work done from a different spot in your house? Can you make the ambiance different? Can you play music? Can you light incense or a candle? Make the room, the space happier, lighter, better. I mean, I've worked from my spa, my house has a spa, I've grabbed my laptop and gotten so much work done out there. Like you just, you don't have to do things the same way that you always do them. You don't have to fold the laundry the same place you always fold it. If you just need a change of scenery and you're feeling low vibe, like change it. Think outside of the box. How could you do things as a mom with your kids in work, in housework, in anything in a different place with a different energy? Like what if you just shifted it a little bit and got creative? Another huge thing that helps me um, in working from a place of rest is breaking the day up. So one of my favorite ways to break the day up is by taking walks. If that's not something you can do in the season, the climate that you live in, then the other favorite thing I do is living room dance parties. Just turn it all the way up, play some Bieber, Taylor Swift, like I don't care, whatever floats your boat, put something upbeat on. Music is energy. It literally has a frequency. And so you can put on upbeat music and it will like scientifically shift your mood. So let it, like you don't have to do that. You don't have to carry that. Let the music carry that and involve your kids and just raise your vibe, bring it up higher and break up the day. Yeah, laundry's gotta get done. Yes, we, you know, the kids need to eat. You gotta make dinner. Uh, work's gotta get done. You can't leave things undone forever and you're tired and you need to rest, but break it up, bring in joy, decide that it gets to be good, decide that it can be easy, decide that you are in charge of your energy and you're gonna take that, you're gonna own it and you're gonna use it for good and you're gonna make things easier and lighter because you get to, because you have the freedom to do that. Whether you work at, in a cubicle, at a, at a desk job, or you're a stay-at-home mom, or you're a business owner and a homeschooler like me, like whatever your lifestyle is, you are in charge of your energy and that is your power. And we gotta stop giving it up and acting like everything just happens to us and at us and we're not in charge of anything. So, if you are in a little bit of a funk, you've just been needing to move slower, get yourself to a place of internal rest and then be slowly productive 
from that internal place rather than just letting it all go and I hope I get better soon or pushing through and not giving yourself enough space to be human. And mamas, the mom mindset bundle is like all kinds of stuff like this times a thousand. My best motherhood focused mindset trainings um, in one place. These are unavailable other places. We talk about body mindset. There's even stuff about money in there. So even if you're not a business owner, like your perspective on money and spending on yourself and honoring yourself by providing things for yourself, even if you're not the breadwinner, um, that's in there. There's so many deep, good, light, um, load lightning, life bettering perspective shifts that I promise you, even if you just hit play and listen to them, your energy will shift, your life will shift just from hitting play. It is a huge mood lifter, energy booster, life changing bundle. I'm incredibly proud of it. It is currently on sale. It's a hundred dollars off and there's a payment plan that makes it way lower. I've never done that before. That's new. Um, it's only for the next uh, two days. It ends on Saturday, Saturday night. So go and snag that. I would love to have you in there and continue to provide you with things like this that really just shift you and prepare you for your day, prepare you to do what you're called to do. You're raising the next generation. A lot of you are also working. A lot of you just have really full plates and you need support. The best thing you can do is get some support, hit play and let someone else come in and help you raise your energy and prepare you for everything that you do in the day with perspective shifts like this. And that is what the mom mindset bundle is for. It is available now, plus the payment plan that I've never done before, only for the next 48 hours. So go get it. Can't wait to see you in there.